Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to make an open world RPG using RPG Maker. So this is going to be a tutorial on how to use, not a, a tutorial, this is not going to be a tutorial because I'm pretty much going to be telling you the ideas behind, not the, idea, the ideas to achieve a playable open world RPG no matter how big you actually want the game to be. It's very possible so you can have a 500 by 500 map with and still have enough events on that map to make it feel like you're actually playing the game and it's not empty and again i'll tell you guys how i achieved that so if you're not subscribed make sure you hit that subscribe button turn on the bell notification icon because i will be posting a whole bunch of stuff on the community tab as well as posting new videos live streams and a whole bunch of good stuff let me see here let's see if i'm missing something I'm missing something okay so pretty much i have a list here of stuff we have to go through in order for you to make a good open world rpg not to make a good one just to make one in general there's a couple of things that's that's the engine specific and there's just some general ideas that i will throw at you to give you some ideas for your game so the first thing now in my opinion i believe if you want to make a good open world rpg um you need good lore so why are uh, what's going on in the world already what happened in the world before the characters and they all have to fit into the world that you're building not just you're making the world for the player to play in just make the world feel like it's been there before the player got there and i got that philosophy from todd howard himself from bethesda who is the person that made skyrim <laughs> But yeah, make the world feel like it's a place that's already that has thousands of histories before you got there. Don't make it feel like the player just got plopped into the world. So that's my first tip on how to make a good open world RPG in general. So this is not RPG Maker specific, but just in general. So moving on, this one is RPG Maker. So once you decide exactly what type of open world you once you decide the lore of your game you come up with the cool stuff like maybe you had elves that wanted to kill everyone and now there's only elves in the world or some cool stuff right the next thing you have to decide is the type of open world you need you want in your game so for example you could have a full open world game with a main map actually there's a couple of very, very how do you say this? There's a couple of variations to this. There we go. I don't know why that was so hard. But yeah, there's a couple of variations to this, right? We're, so if we hop into my main game, Don't Haven here. You see how all the main, all the town maps, they're actually all on separate. So it's like the old way of doing it, which I'm not the old way, the semi-open, which I will also show you. So all the towns and villages are on the separate map because i know that they're going to have a lot of events and stuff happening in them specifically so in order to deal with lag which we will get to i i put them in separate maps right but the main map you could work from here all the way there there'll be npcs on the way there'll be monsters for you to fight and again this is using an action battle system so everything is in real time not turn based so there's no random encounters or anything like that when you're actually so if i hop in the game just in case you're not familiar with this game ooh, i probably shouldn't have saved because i don't know what i changed i'm just gonna continue hopefully we're in a good spot already yeah so if I hop out to the main world, as you can see, I have my pet following me around. I have this guy who has a quest for me. If I want to walk all the way to the other town, I can while interacting with enemies on the map. As you can see, that guy attacked me. So this is what I would consider a full open main map right so the main map is open you can walk around do a whole bunch of stuff but the towns are zoned to a different map so that way it minimizes the lag the next type of open world you could have is a semi open main map which means specifically i do not like so if i hop in over here where i already have something open i can show you so that's these kind of maps like the old final fantasy maps where they'll have something like this and then over here, let's say they want to represent some mountain ranges, they'll put that here. And then this is over here. And then if I want to have a town, or let's say this is a castle, I have a castle here. I have a castle there. What else do they do? 
if they want to block off some places you can't go, they will do something like that, right? And then let's say I want to go to the next town, the next town will be, I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about, right? The next town will be over there. So if I hop into this game now, you can't really see me because I'm invisible, but pretty much this is how you would navigate through the world, right? So you will go through that and you will go, let's say I'm going from town to town, it will be like this. Now this type of open world usually uses one of the turn-based systems, either an ATB or otherwise. It can also use a, an ABS, which is an action battle system, but I rarely see that with these type of systems. But now that I'm actually thinking about that, I think I'm going to make a game that's like this. Don't, but don't hold me to that. So that's what I mean by, if we bring this back up, an open, a semi-open main. So it's semi-open, everything is more scaled down. It's not really on the grand scale of, let's say like my Dawnhaven where all of these are 50 by 50 maps that you're walking through, right? And then you have your segmented maps. Now, segmented maps are also cool. It's if you think about the old Legend of Zelda, I have that game, I can't remember where. Um, the town is a different map, but each of the zones are also different maps. So for example, I can't really demonstrate that to you, but I can zoom in here. So if you pretend that all these squares are 50 by 50 and they're all different maps, right? So what would normally happen is, let's say they will block off this exit they will block off this exit, block off this exit, block off this, block this off. You will explore here, then when you want to go to the next map, you go through the teleportation thing here, and now you're in the next map. Over here will be blocked off, over here will be blocked off. And then this is a different map. If you want to go to this map, you will come here, and then this will be blocked off. Maybe this will be blocked off, this will be blocked off. Then you have an exit here to go this way. And then you have an exit to go this way, have an exit to go this way. So this will do all of this. So that's what I mean by segmented map. Now each of the different maps have their strength and weaknesses. Me personally, I like having the player actually be in the world and be a part of the world. So that's why I do it this way. And also to minimize on lag, I segment out the towns themselves, but not the actual open. And also, again, this is the same philosophy that Skyrim uses. So if you've played Skyrim or any of the Elder Scrolls, the open world is always open, but then the towns and then the dungeons and stuff are on a different map. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so let's move on. So after you figure out what type of open world you want, the next thing you have to decide is the type of ABS you actually need to use in your, the type of combat you want in your game. Now. The different types of combat are suited for different maps, but you could are more suited for different maps, but you could use them interchangeably. And the more unique you can make your game, the better. For example, I can have this type of world map and still have an ABS. It's possible. So that way, instead of having random encounters here, you'll just be fighting the monsters on screen. That's another way you could do it. There's nothing wrong with that. You could have a turn base, which is the regular, which is you could either do a side view or front view, whatever, turn base. You could have the ATV, which is I believe the one where there's no turns, you just have to wait for your meter to fill up, then you could attack. So the, the choices are endless for you. The only thing that really determines um, what nothing determines, that's what I'm actually trying to, that's what this video is for, to tell you that no matter what option you pick, you can do whatever you want to there's no limitation to the engine itself but what you there is a limitation it's a very big limitation but there's walkarounds to it to make it seem like there isn't pretty much what i'm trying to say so the next thing you have to decide after you decide the type of combat is how big you want the map to be and that's all your maps so including your main map the towns the dungeon blah 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 if you want a big game you can have a big game you could have a short like for example you could have a, an open world game in the 50 by 50 map where again you could have one of these atbs i mean what am i talking about you could have one of these maps that's like this where it's 50 by 50 and all everything takes place in that one little region or you could even have it be a, a, a city where this the city map is the open world and then the in, inside the buildings are the 
different zones and stuff and then you can make the big buildings themselves huge that way when you're walking around in the city that's the open world and then you also have other places to explore in the buildings and stuff like that so that's another way you can do it. let me just check on my chat real quick how did you make good question once how did you make your rpg make a full screen like that my always has for which one the it's a script that i'm using if you're talking about ace i can kind of show you guys that giving me stuff to cut out in the video for ace i believe it's one of yen flies or however you all right cool cool back to where was that cool so making the open world game right so you decide how big you want the map like after you decide how big you want the map the next thing you have to consider is lag right rpg maker isn't really a powerful engine per se so you cannot do a lot you can't have a ton of parallel process events running at the same time even though i do you you can't have a lot of events on the map you, it's just a lot of limitations so you have to keep that in depending on what rpg maker you're using for example if you're using the newer ones i get the names confused mv or mz right is built into the engine where whatever is not on the map isn't updated so it's it's lighter on your system right if you're using vx ace you're gonna need a couple of scripts to do the same if you look up rpg maker vs ace anti lag script you'll find something but here's a couple of ones that i use victor engine anti lag and also i use the one that's built into the actual abs i'm using i don't know if they work together i doubt it but i hope so because it works it's in here somewhere here it is anti lag so if you're out of range, if you're three tiles out of range, you don't get updated. And then for this one, I believe I have it set to the same value just in case. Because I don't know which one's actually working. So I have them both in there. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, so again, like I said, the lag, it depends on the type of open world you have. If you have a type of open world, okay, so lag, this is actually a big topic. So that's why I separated it by itself because there's a sh ton of ways to deal with lag. For example, you could just have a small map where you don't, you wouldn't need that much events on it in order to keep the players engaged. But if you're doing something um, like a big open world, you could have an, a turn-based system where the there's not a lot of events on the map because those events will be enemies if you were using an action battle system. So you could use a turn base to minimize the lag so you don't have a lot of events. You could do what I do, which, okay. So this is what I do to minimize the lag. It's a couple of things I do, right? If you look on this map, you might see some events. There are a couple of events, right? If, especially if you scroll over here, there's a lot more events, right? I can add a little bit more events in here before the game will actually start lagging. Actually, I could add a lot more events on this map before the game will actually start lagging because of that anti-lag script that I have, right? But if I have so much events on this map, it will lag, right? Keep that in mind. So what I do to minimize the lag is, instead of having all the enemies on this one map, thank you, appreciate you. Instead of having all, this, and all the enemies in this one map, I spawn them in. And then I try to mimic random encounters. I wish I did this in RPG Maker MV because that guy that made the Alpha ABS built in random encounters into the ABS so I wouldn't have had to do all of this. But hey, you didn't have all of that back then. So what I do is I have a script that spawns enemies or spawns events from one map to a different map, right? And then what I did was I made my own script called spawn encounters using those script calls i pretty much just made some logic that said hey every few seconds or every few time passes and the time frame doesn't matter every whatever time passes spawn one of those enemies from this pool of enemies depending on what region that the player is standing on so if you're standing in the snow region it won't spawn grass enemies it will spawn snow enemies right it will say hey if you're on this region pick from this pool and then it will literally just say hey it will find the player's position and then spawn the enemy like five tiles or six tiles away from the player's current position that way the player might run into that enemy 
or they might not run into that enemy but the enemy will spawn right so it's dynamic and random still so the enemy will spawn at a random time the enemy will spawn at a random location that's by you and then it's up to you to run into them now if you leave the map and come back and when you leave the map all the enemies are destroyed when you come back in the map the whole system starts over again where it's trying to find your location and then spawn in enemies next to you that way i never have too many events on the map at one time and also i keep a limit on how much of those enemies will spawn um loot spawner that's different but that's what that did so that's one way i found to minimize do you plan on uploading actually if i respond to that so that's one of the ways i as a lag on the Damn, i'm losing my okay so that's one of the ways i minimize the lag from my games it's spawning the events in again if i go to this game which i was going to upload today because it's playable and you can win but for some reason my ABS stopped working and I think that was the reason why I stopped working on this game a long time ago because I just couldn't figure it out and I didn't want to bother with it because I found Dawnhaven so I just switched back to Dawnhaven. But again, if you look at this map, not this map, this game, the same philosophy, right? Let me minimize this. It's just easier to do it now. Where I have my map, I can't have a lot of events on this map because the game will lag, right? So what I do is, I spawn the enemies in, this time, instead of doing the scripts, I do it with events, because you could do the same things. I just did it with scripts because I know how to, I know Ruby. I don't know JavaScript that much, so I did it with the events because it's easier. Plus, he already gives you script calls to spawn the, not script calls, plugin commands to spawn the stuff in. But if you see, this is literally the same kind of system as the script that I have but instead of it picking from a pool it's just picking a random if I could find that map I don't know why this is so small it's just picking a random enemy between the enemies that I spawn because I think it doesn't matter where you are maybe I don't know but it works the same way and then if you go to the newer game the newest game I just made a couple of days ago again the same philosophy where we spawn the enemies based on this one doesn't spawn the enemies based on the player's location it just spawns the enemies because it's like a zombie game where there's zombies on the map and they're gonna spawn and the longer you play the more zombies spawn so pretty much the same thing to minimize the lag if you're gonna have main open world where you want a lot of events and enemies and stuff like that you need to have the enemies spawn in. You can't have the enemies just sit in there because when now the anti lag script might help with that, but usually your game will lag. Also, another tip to minimize the lag is all your parallel process events. And as you can see, I have a lot of them parallel, 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 parallel. Oh, not parallel. But most of these, right, are parallel processes, right? You have to make sure you wait in your parallel processes right 30 frames is one second now for example this is always set in these values like literally i need these values always being set i should make it 60 second 60 frames because one second is plenty of time but it's in 30 but just make sure all your parallel processes you wait because if you don't wait that one i couldn't wait longer because i need it to be instant but you need to wait it, it helps with lag a lot but yeah if it's a parallel process make sure you wait i don't have a wait command here but if you look in the script you will see where it says wait always wait oh uh, lag 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 what else can we do about lag that's pretty much it make sure you spawn in your enemies make sure you wait on your parallel processes don't have too many events on the screen and if you're going to have a lot of events you need a big map and the reason why you need a big map is because let's say i'm on this map i'm not seeing all the events over here because my anti life script won't allow me to see stuff that's past three tiles away and i'm more than three tiles away i'm actually like this is 50 by 50 50 by 50 and if the event is over here it's like almost 100 by 100 tile away from me so <clears throat> you have to have a big map if you're gonna have a lot of events on the screen 
if you have a small game map, then you can't have that many events on the screen. You have to spawn them in. This is a combination of both to minimize the lag to the minimal minimal. Alright, let's move on to the next topic. But after you finish the lag stuff, then you have to start making your weapons, armors, items, and spells, and all the stuff that you're going to need to power up your character. And this is also where you decide on your game progression, right? So how the and how the player will get stronger and also how the enemies how players and enemies will grow. Oh yeah, before I forget. Let's say script. Do you plan on uploading that script online? I actually yeah, I could probably upload that script somewhere. Yeah, I'll upload it. I don't really consider myself a scripter, that's why I didn't upload it because it's just something I needed for my game and I didn't think. But yeah, I got you guys, I'm gonna upload that after this video. What else, what else? And I'm gonna make it more edit, edit friendly for you guys too. Yes, I'm gonna make another video to show you guys how I make the map. This map took a lot of time. Do you plan on, I have a Discord, actually. Discord. Let me give you the link. If you have any questions join help i'll help you out okay cool 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 let's get back to this so this is pretty much um next thing you got is your items weapons armors spells and stuff like that also leading into your gameplay progression how the players grow and how the enemies will grow because those are the only two things that grow in the game you as a player and the enemies that you're going to be fighting sorry you also make your enemy and you also make your player Actually, you make a player first. Oh, it doesn't really matter. You can make your enemies and players. Actually, no. Make your player first. And then make your enemy. So when you make your player, right? There's a couple of things that goes into that. There's static. Stat. And. Player control. Or both right so what I mean by that so when you make your enemies your enemies will always be based off of your players so that's what I'm saying make your players first but you could technically make your enemies give them stats and then have your player catch up to your enemies but it doesn't make sense just set your enemy to how strong they're gonna be and then limit your enemies to how strong your players are so you could do static growth like in Pokemon when your Pokemon's level up, they gain a certain amount of stats every level. Or you could do something like where Torchlight, when you level up, you assign your stats. The player ass assigns their own stats, right? And then, based on that, make enemy stats. For example, if you're gonna be giving your players 20 stat points every level, you wouldn't make your enemies get five points stronger every level. So pretty much that right so you make your enemies then you make your gameplay progression which is how the players and the enemies will grow right and then not really game progression your character progression right you decide your character progression then you make your major NPCs this is where you and again you have this in the back of your mind your lore you make your major NPCs, and this is before you make your major NPCs. Before you do all of, all this other stuff, I forgot one big thing, one huge thing: your story. So you make your lore, then you make your story based on your lore, right? You don't make your NPCs yet, right? And then you make major NPCs based on what you need for story or side quests cool 
So based on what you need, you make the major characters. So you say, let's say your story is about a doctor that. So let's say your world is a, a world where there's no doctors, right? And then your main character is the last doctor, right? Or like a, someone who's practicing to be a doctor, right? And then they they have to go on this secret mission to go go treat this girl. So the girl now is your first major NPC. You make her you make a background story about the girl. About all the stuff the girl's doing, why she's sick, why she's blah 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 blah, and then you go see the girl. Now she has a mother. Then you find out where. Then you start making stuff about her mother and stuff like that. So story, your lore, story based on your lore. Then major NPCs based on your story, and based on what you need for your story and for what you need for the side quest to fit your lore and your whatever else you're doing. And then after you do all of that and you decide all you all the quests and all the story stuff then you make the gameplay loop, right? Usually with RRPGs, you start a noob, you find stuff, or you explore to find stuff to make you better. That's the main gameplay loop with any RPG, right? Especially open world RPGs because the reason why they're open is for you to explore, right? Because if it wasn't, then you could just have a linear game where you just give the players stuff at a certain point in the game when they get to that point. So. After you make, uh, so after the first gameplay loop, the second one is reasons to explore, right? Now, if you was here before, uh, fuck that mind. So if you was here before, the reason to explore can't just be to get better because that gets boring after a while, right? Because if that was the only reason why the player is playing your game, then after they get better to a certain level, they're gonna be like, you know what? I don't need to get better anymore because this is all this game is about, right? So you need to give them a reason to explore. Example, the main quest, the side quest right and you need to give them major rewards things that would actually make it worthwhile for them to uh, to do those quests so that way they have a goal in mind my goal is to do this quest but then there's other stuff to do as in they get they get to explore to for example they're heading to this castle over here instead of heading to this castle and uh, a monster might appear they start chasing the monster now they're over here trying to do some other stuff and then when they're done doing that other stuff then they remember oh i have a quest to do then they go back to doing the quest so that's the reason to it because they still want that major reward because they know once they're once they finish their main quest they're gonna get something big right which also then goes into distractions so distractions are things like with minor rewards a good ex do you think one second do you think it's a noob you explore to find stuff and then you need reasons to explore main quest a side quest that will give you major rewards and then you also need distractions in your game right so distractions with minor rewards for example let's say you do a quest right it could be a distraction it doesn't really give you a reward but it gives you a good story right or it could give you a small item that's not really important like some potions or maybe a small amount of gold or a small power up right so that's a type of distraction when you have like mini quests right that's not really a, a side quest it's just like some mini activity right or you could have gambling in your game where the player can go somewhere and play some put a little bit of money to try to win a, a big lot of money so that's a distraction a good distraction in gta is they have the stripper club where you can go to the stripper club to the strip club <laughs> stripper club. you can go to the strip club and interact with strippers that's a distraction you don't need to do that for the game but you can do that to because you want to so mini games are a good way to do that there's a ton of other stuff you can do like collectibles i have that in extra collectibles and stuff like that but yeah so you need distractions in your games too and keep in mind all of this is to encourage the players to explore your world because them doing the main quest will lead them to explore the game and then they're going to see stuff in the distance and then they're going to want to go to those stuff and then when they do go to those stuff and they see those minor re minor rewards like for example let's say they go a different path and then they see an npc that needs help with something else they help that npc now they got the reward because they okay i got something that i never would have got if i went there now they return back to their main quest and then they get a bigger reward than they did from the other stuff that they did now they feel even better because now they got stuff but yeah <laughs> And then now you do your minor NPCs after you decide your gameplay loops and usually minor NPCs what they'll do is they'll give you world information, they'll give you self information so stuff about themselves and again remember all these stuff all refer back to 
the lore first, then the story second, right? So they can tell you stuff about the world, which is the lore. They can give you information about themselves, which again is the lore. And then they could also give you information about the story or information about the people in the story. That's another op option. Or they just say random stuff. Whenever you can't think of stuff, just make them say random stuff. Because you do need to populate your towns to make them look alive. Oh, shoot. My girl's been cool. So yeah, you have your minor NPCs, they do stuff. And then you have your extra stuff. I don't know why I can never spell mounts, M-O-U-N-T-S. I always spell it M-O-N-T-S, right? You have your minor NPCs, and then you have your extra stuff like mounts, collectibles, things that's not really necessary, but you put it there to make it easy or give the player something to do. For example, mounts, you don't really need it in the game, but you need to have your players travel faster, but you also have fast traveling. That's another extra you have in your game, but they don't really need mounts if they can fast travel, but you want mounts because it'll be cool for them to ride those mounts, right? Cool. <laughs> Collectibles, this for them to, especially when people like to collect stuff, right? They'll spend some more time in your game collecting stuff, which will lead them to explore, which will lead them to back into that gameplay, right? And then you need dynamic events. You don't need them, but they're good to have. Again, these are all, all extra stuff, right? Dynamic events meaning like NPCs maybe go to sleep. They're not awake at nighttime or all the shops aren't open all the time or the shops change their inventory or just things happening, right? Random events. So random stuff, things that make it fun to be in your world, like mounts, collecting stuff. I can't really think of other stuff. Just fun stuff to have in your game. If you have all of these things together, right? Not only can you make an open world game in any engine or whatever you want to do, but you could definitely make an open world game in RPG Maker. The main thing that you gotta really consider when I'm gonna run through this list again, specifically the things for RPG Maker is the type of open world. So do you want a map like mine, right? The only thing that's segmented is the major areas like the towns or the dungeons, but the main actual world that you walk around are all open. Or you could have the Final Fantasy maps where all the towns are icons and you could walk around the open world but you're not really, it's like a map or whatever. Or you could have the segmented, right? You decide the combat that you want, you decide how big you want the map to be because all three of these, the type of open world, the combat and how big you want the map all affect the lag, right? If you want to ABS, you're going to have more lag, period, versus all the other combats because you're going to have more events on your map. So you have to find a way to go around that. Either have an event spawn into the map by the enemy or just having a smaller map so you can have smaller events or having a big map with, I'm sorry, having a big map with, with fewer events in between them. Then making your items, making your player, figuring out what kind of stats that you, you want the player to have if it's gonna be controlled by you or by the player, the enemies that you're gonna have in your game, the character progression, now there's something else I left off and that's class, right? The classes in your game, it's optional. You can have classes in your game, you can have no class. Uh, me personally, I like having no class. If you want to have a sword, pick up a sword and use it. If you want to have a bow, whatever, pick up a sword and use it. Depending on your stats is how good you're going to be with those weapons. Just like in real life, I want it to be more realistic. I never like to bound the player. That's the other thing too, player choice. How much choice are you giving them? In my game, I like to give the players, these are just in the random spots, right? So if I'm gonna do player choice, I'm actually gonna put that up here. I have to lag, right? And then classes <clears throat> could be after items, right? So we're wrapping up the video here. Let me just put these last few little tab bits. Right. Open class or define. Right. So you could either have it open where anyone could use anything. Could be a warrior mage if you want, or you could be if you're a mage, you're a mage. Right. 
And then again, that leads to player choice. Player choice will be above all of this. After you figure out your lag issue and how you're going to minimize your lag, you decide how much choice do I want the player to have? Do I want them to be able to go everywhere right off the bat? That's a player choice. Or do I want to have all these little buildings locked and they have to go to here first to go do this or go here first to go do that? I don't know why I forgot that. But player choice. Do you want them to decide how much stats that they get? Do they decide what stats go to what to blah, blah, blah and stuff like that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I know this wasn't like a like a doing stuff RPG, more like a this to get your, your mind going. But yeah, pretty much that's all I have for today. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Make sure to... I'm still going to be live streaming. This is just to end this <laughs> video. But thank you guys again for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Hit that bell notification icon. I'd really appreciate it. And it will also keep you informed when I release stuff like this. Yeah, play my games, man. I put in a lot of work. And I got tutorials too. If you guys need any help with anything, just let me know. Discord, I'm going to put the link down. Yeah, come ask me questions. But besides that, and without further ado, we are done with the video, guys. See you guys next time.